healthcare as a field has advanced massively in the last few centuries, especially since the latter half of the 20th century. The doubling time of literature available in the medical field in 1950 was approximately 50 years. This decreased to 7 years by 1980, 3 years by 2010, and it was predicted by 2020 that literature available in any field-specific topic would double every 73 days. With easy access to the internet, any physician given enough time could find answers and treatments for any patient's problems. Despite these advancements, we are faced with an uncomfortable paradox in the United States. Our population is increasingly unhealthy, and healthcare is struggling to keep up with seeing and treating patients. The mortality numbers speak for themselves. The average life expectancy in the United States has dropped from nearly 79 years in 2019 to 76 years in 2022. So if doctors have more information than ever on how to cure things, what is causing this paradox? Sicker patients living longer. Medical advancements have allowed people with chronic conditions to live longer, but this has not necessarily translated into improved overall health. For example, cardiac stenting, or something like a coronary artery bypass graft, also known as cabbage, can provide a mortality benefit in heart attack cases but may not necessarily improve symptoms or overall health. Increased healthcare access and overutilization. As healthcare has become more accessible, the number of people seeking care is rising. Thanks to the pandemic, getting checked out for any cough or fever has been normalized in all ages, but especially notable in younger patients. Younger patients who would have stayed home in the past are now used to seeking care and coming to the ER for all problems. The healthcare exodus. There has been a large exodus in the healthcare workforce as more and more nurses and doctors leave, both due to age of baby boomers but also the stress of the duties and lack of fulfillment in patient care. Their replacements are saddled with higher expectations, higher patient loads, and sicker patients. This has led to overwhelming career dissatisfaction, burnout, and increasing suicide rates. This leads to strain on the system and potentially compromises the quality of care. Reactive treatment over preventative care. The current healthcare and insurance payment models tend to prioritize reactive treatment over preventative care. Treating a heart attack or heart failure pays more than preventing one, and the same goes for cancer treatment or diabetes management. Treating these conditions after they occur with medication or procedures is often more like a band-aid than an actual cure, and significant reversal is rarely ever achieved by medication or procedures alone. However, it is easier to prescribe medication or perform a procedure. Most conditions that form out of bad habits happen over years. Preventing these conditions or reversing them takes time and forethought, and the system has left providers with literal of either. So if these are the problems, are there any real solutions? Incentivize preventative and primary care. Encouraging a shift in focus towards preventative care by financially rewarding healthcare providers for proactively managing patients' health, thus reducing the need for costly and invasive treatments. No one likes to think about money as a solution in a field where caring is supposed to be the major goal, but the average student loan burden of a physician is $300,000. And when it comes time for doctors to choose their specialty, the weight of those loans is heavy, and asking the student to choose a relatively low-paying field as a PCP making less than 200 k rather than a specialty such as interventional cardiology, where pay can be two to three times higher, is too much to ask. What would you or anyone do in that situation? Stop using medication as first real treatment. Lifestyle modification in school is supposed to be the first step in treating conditions of the first world, namely hypertension, diabetes, or high cholesterol. Despite this, lifestyle modification is only a small part of the curricula, and there is no time in school or practice given to helping patients implement changes. This is further burdened by human nature. Patients do not want to change habits they have developed over the course of many years. They want a pill that they can take once a day, and the problem goes away. Rather than relying on medications as the primary solution for health issues, we need to promote alternative strategies like lifestyle modifications and behavioral changes to address the root cause of chronic conditions. Return to patient care at home. Doctors' visits to a patient's home are seen as an antiquated thing of the past or are reserved for the ultra-rich who can afford to have a concierge doctor on call at any time. But more and more it is apparent that asking people to change then not following up in their home environment is not working. Our habits are not solely internal, they form over time as a result of who we spend our time with and what our home and work environment is like. 
If we do not change the environment around us, we will not be able to improve our diet, exercise, or stress management. The rapid growth of medical knowledge and advancements in healthcare has led to an increase in life expectancy, but with sicker patients living longer, life expectancy is now declining as well. To address this, we need to shift our focus from reactive treatments to preventative care, decrease reliance on medications as a primary solution for all conditions, and emphasize lifestyle modification and individualized personal patient care. I believe by implementing these solutions, we can work towards a healthier society and a more sustainable healthcare system.